perpendicular to the opposite side at the midpoint. So if I draw a line segment from a vertex and it's perpendicular to the, opposite, to the opposite side, what could I call it? Perpendicular It's called an altitude. And if it's going through the midpoint, I could also call it a what? A median. So a perpendicular bisector is an altitude and a median all in one. Because it's doing both jobs. It's cutting the opposite side in half. And it's perpendicular, forming right angles. Now we talked about the perpendicular bisector of an angle last week when we were talking about isosceles triangles. The perpendicular bisector, well, excuse me, the bisector of the vertex angle is perpendicular and bisects the opposite side, right? for the base. So what kind of triangle has a perpendicular bisector? An isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle. But scalene triangles do not have perpendicular bisectors because it's impossible to be perpendicular and bisect at the same time if none of the sides are equal to each other. Okay? Let's go back. Every triangle has three medians. And all three of the medians are found inside. And what do they do? Bisect the sides. Every triangle has three altitudes. Where they are located depends on what kind of triangle you're dealing with. What does an altitude do? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. It meets the opposite side perpendicular, forming 90 degree angles. Does every triangle have a perpendicular bisector? No. no. Only what? Isosceles and equilateral. Only isosceles or equilateral triangles. Wait, I thought we just saw the acute and the obtuse one were altitude. Never mind, we're talking about perpendicular. This is both at the same time. This is perpendicular and bisecting all together. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Here are our theorems. Now, this is really cool. Should I take my notebook? This is where I just love. Well, you need to put it in your notes, too. So get your, do it in your note cards later. Here's where I love my smart board. The theorem states that if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment... It's the perpendicular bisector of a segment. It's something going through a line segment perpendicular at the midpoint. Then that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Suppose the only picture I had was segment AC and segment DB. And these were the tick marks and labels that you had. What do you know that segment DB is? It's the perpendicular, because of the right angle, bisector of AC. Right? Okay. Now according to this theorem, if point D lies on that segment, then the distance from D to A is exactly the same as the distance from D to C. Well if that's the case, what kind of triangle have I just created? An isosceles triangle. And if it is an isosceles triangle, 
What do I know about angle A and angle C? They're congruent to each other because they are the base angles of the isosceles triangle. Why is it isosceles triangle again? Two equal sides. Okay. Now, what else this says is, okay, suppose I told you that there was another <coughs> point in here called point E. Well, according to this theorem, if we already know that DB is the perpendicular bisector of AC, then we know that point E is the same distance to point A as it is to point C. So we've just created another isosceles triangle. And what is that? What, what's the name of it? Triangle what? AEC. Which means that this angle is congruent to this angle now. Oh. Nifty, nifty. And I can keep putting more points, but I think you get the gist of it. Wait, when would we use this? In, uh, in proving things, in looking for segment measures, angle measures, whatever. Okay? Tonight for homework. Okay. In a proof? Yes. Remember, the theorems, way. definitions, and all that other monkey business are reasons and proofs. There is no name for this. Um, all I can say is if you have to write it as a reason, just abbreviate it as best you can. Can um, Tomorrow, can we do our note cards? We, we do a lot well, tomorrow we need to review. Okay. Oh, yeah, and we do need to do the note cards. I need to prepare that tonight. Yeah, we have a lot of note cards in the chair. Okay. <laughs> all right. The next theorem is the converse of the first theorem. The first theorem said that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it is the same distance to the endpoints. The next one says, if the point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then we know that it lies on what? The perpendicular bisector. Okay, so it's just taking the first theorem, which was in if-then form, and it's writing the converse of it. So it's basically, what do I know first? Last time, the first thing I knew was, this is a perpendicular bisector. This time... This time, if this is the information I know, well, call this point D, call this point A, point B, and point C. According to this theorem, if I know that the distance from D to A is the same as the distance from D to C, then D must be on the perpendicular bisector. So if this red line is perpendicular, then it's also doing what? Bisecting AC, which means that B is the what? Midpoint of AC. Man, we so smart. All right, next theorem. We talked about the bisector of a segment. Now let's talk about the bisector of an angle. If a point lies on the bisector of an angle, then it, the point, is equidistant to the sides of that angle. 